friends, dear colleagues, the White Night Forum is all always a combination of great uh, opportunity to touch to the to touch the beautiful, I mean the science and communication. And I'm sure that we all wait finally for communication uh, in uh, real form and not not in a digital form. So not to hoard at humors. We all uh, uh, hoard data, and it is uh, those tumors which develop from that uh, uh, structure, which we all actually have. I want to give you a small preamble, small short history, so to say. So many years ago, professors from Italy, from Italy, Franco Bertoni and Patrizio Baccini. We had a very good communication, and by that uh, moment, I could not actually understand what is a giant cell tumor and why it can be malignant and primary malignant or secondary malignant. And I should say that due to this uh, opportunity to share a microscope with those wonderful teachers and tutors and professors, uh, we uh, mm, this uh, so I have no more questions about that. And a similar story uh, is related to the not accorded tumors. We had a visit uh, by Doris Wenger, and we also were able to discuss with her in details what is this tumors the tumor and which type of those tumors we can see in humans, not only in humans but even in uh, animals. And as a result. We've developed such a good, uh, such a nice structure, not a hard uh, rudiments, or a hordosis physalifora, uh, uh, similar to physalis, and they appear, and the people and were found in case of autopsies in rather high percentage, but this is a. Uh, a benign tumor, it's gamma toma, so it's just pure research interest. But uh, there could be benign or tumors. Uh, it's a clinical sign, a patient 52 years, or complaining on uh, uh, spinal pain. You see it here is a clearly circum circumscribed uh, focus, and uh, we don't see any difference between the lesion and the bone marrow. Uh, with a larger magnification, we can finally find this uh, delimitation. The benign or the horda tumor is a rule, it's an accidental finding. It is located eccentrically, and uh, along with that, uh, in case of its uh, mass, there is no soft tissue component. If we see inclusion of fat tissue, it is a benign, very important benign signs for uh, differential diagnosis. So, it is a, it is a, a, a mass within the bone. It is sclerotic uh, lesion. It doesn't go outside the bone. It is soft tissue, so it doesn't progress and doesn't grow. With uh, MRI in T1 in T1 mode, it's a, a so, so to say low signal. With T2, we have high signal. How this uh, mass looks in, at, on, in microscope? It looks like uh, fat tissue. Not the horde cells are large, but the uh, nuclei are identical, similar. Uh, mm, uh, there is no polymorphism and uh, additional immunohistochemistry uh, uh, marker brachiuri and cytokeratines they are positively expressed so this, benign, so this uh, benign mass could be proven. The next tumor is chordoma it's a malignant mass, malignant lesion you see it destroys bone tissue it, it is uh, a very aggressive it is outside of the initial bone. It is uh, lobulated. On MRI, you see the uh, lobules, you see infiltrative growth. You see it still shows some non specific signal. With uh, T1, it is low. With T2, it is rather uh, high. 
once again, it's aggressive, uh, bone-destroying uh, signs, lytical uh, sight, uh, calcinosis uh, foci uh, inside, rather typical. This tumor usually is uh, centrally located, and T1, T2 signals we already mentioned. Differential diagnosis uh, first for differential diagnosis first of all should differentiate from chondrosarcoma, chondroblastic variant of osteosarcoma, and, meta and uh, metastasis, metastatic disease. Then, uh, with regard to considering when considering those tumors, I should uh, uh, mention the visit to, to Moscow of uh, wonderful speakers, um, professors uh, James Kornika and Peter Nielsen. And uh, one of the topics uh, by Peter Nielsen was uh, not a horde tumors. And uh, after all this material was, so to say, digested, so if I may say so, in, um, in a, so to say, uh, comprehensive manner, we finally develop understanding. The so not the horde tumors, and it uh, equals to the new WHO classification of 20, uh, 2020, not the horde rudiments, uh, benign hordoma tumors, and classical hordoma. It could be either chondroid or mixoid type, low, uh, so, so high grade uh, hordoma, the differentiated hordoma, uh, and as exclusive uh, variant, extra axial hordoma. And then, along with this uh, knowledge base, we came to uh, uh, considering almost uh, 90 uh, uh, cases in our cultural uh, center, mostly cordoma of uh, sacral and coccygeal area. Also, there were several cases of uh, spinal cordoma and the bone skull cordomas. And you see, they mainly those tumors are uh, tumors in the area of uh, uh, coccygeal and sacral tumors. How this tumor look like? It is uh, such a lobulated with clear mixoid matrix. Uh, with, uh, uh, some parts are more solid. Um, uh, then say it could be of chondrite or mixoid type. And uh, it's uh, different with uh, not that uh, properly name it with uh, uh, such a uh, uh, with such a so to say shortiness, uh, snottiness type, uh, because it's easy to destroy it, and so tumor complexes uh, just get spread. And since it doesn't require uh, a, a strong vascularization, the vascularization of those cell uh, pieces uh, can easily, so to say. Uh, develop into relapse. So, be nice science. Diffusely located uh, cells uh, with the inclusions of fat or uh, bone uh, marrow, no nuclear tip here. Uh, matrix is more gran granular than mixoid one, it's important. No mitosis and, and necrosis. Uh, bone uh, tubercular structure is retained, extremely slow growth, or, or, and no soft tissue component. And uh, under microscope, there are n uh, no signs of uh, remote bone remodeling or activity of the blast or the class. Malignant signs are uh, opposite aggressive growth, uh, uh, spread into adjusted soft tissues impaired trabecular uh, bone structure and the most important it is the infiltrative growth for cordoma uh, is typical to have its classical structure it's a, a chain of cells in mixoid stroma the stroma could be more conjoined or more mixoid as we mentioned and in general in total the classic cordoma uh, excluding small several variants, it's easy to recognize. Uh, then the mark, mark, marker which we like the most, brachyuri, it's a protein sh short tail. It helps to identify not the horde cells and uh, helps us in differential diagnosis with many other uh, um, um, neoplasms. This next chordoma variant is a de differentiated chordoma, so it de differentiates uh, into the 
high-grade sarcoma. You see uh, cell polymorphism, uh, necrosis, and when we look into the microscope on the tumor, so under the microscope we can say that we do not recognize uh, those uh, 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 we don't recognize uh, those uh, plant cells. It looks like pleomorphic sarcoma, where we have cells of various uh, shape and size, and uh, mm, uh, and with uh, so to say different uh, uh, nuclear atypia. So this sarcoma doesn't look like it's uh, so to say antecedent. Uh, markers are the same as 100 epithelial membranous antigen, cytokeratins, and of course brachyuri. But along the along the differentiation uh, of the tumor uh, disappears uh, uh, marker, not one marker disappears. It's a very important sign for another type of chordoma is highly differentiated chordoma. It's a specific uh, chord, uh, tumor. It is specifically mentioned in the uh, double show classification. It's mainly uh, uh, pediatric chordoma, uh, it's a tumor which develops in the skull uh, base. <coughs> uh, there will be 20 cases described. Uh, it's a tumor of not a horda, which develops outside of uh, uh, outside of uh, Mm, uh, so to say, backbone. You see, here's a small sclerotic lithical uh, focus with clear sh with clear margins uh, in metaepiphysis of uh, uh, um, um, of the tibial bone. And in metaepiphysis, you see a typical large plant cells. They have rather typical structure. Uh, it has been confirmed with immunohistochemistry and so so what we saw when we tried to analyze uh, rather huge amount of clinical material uh, what are the main uh, issues which surgeons and diagnosts see when treating chordomas first of all the tumor uh, uh, for a long while is asymptomatic, it reaches big size and is diagnosed quite late. At the surgery, uh, the uh, bleeding, blood loss, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, so to say, uh, bleeding tendency of this tissue is uh, rather important to worsen in the such results uh, healing of the wounds is not that good and uh, they have high relapse uh, rate location above uh, third uh, sacral uh, um, vertebrae is a bad prognostic signs what surgeons say it's one of the most important prognostic surgical signs and regretfully standard chemotherapy, conventional chemotherapy is ineffective with uh, chordomas. In some cases, they use uh, radiation therapy, prognostic markers uh, has not yet been developed, or like uh, KI-67, markers uh, like KI-67, they uh, matter of discussion, and the main uh, agents to treat chordomas are matinib, and mostly we talk about symptomatic therapy. Uh, lately, we uh, studied the use of inhibitors of tyrosine kinase, VGF and mTOR, but part of those agents showed to be uh, quite promising, but still there is no stable, well-developed and approved uh, chemotherapeutic regimen for such tumor. Uh, with that regard, our study of 30 patients in uh, blood serum, in both in blood serum and in tissue, for the markers of uh, immune response. In case of chordomas, it's uh, for PD-1 and PDL one It seems to be uh, uh, very important. So, 
this is the uh, study that we conducted, and I suppose it is rather interesting. Now, this is, uh, in brief, what I wanted to tell you about, and thank you very much for your attention.